With the world transitioning to renewable energy, one of the biggest challenges we face is how to ensure power can be supplied to everyone, even when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing. There are many types of low carbon energy capturing technologies. However, none of them provide the flexibility we currently rely on from fossil fuel plants. What this means is we need to find out how to cheaply store energy so we can save it up when there is a surplus and release it when there isn't enough being generated. Energy storage is a huge and fascinating topic, with batteries probably being the first one to come to the minds of many. However, scaling up batteries to the grid level is an expensive task, and therefore the industry is trying to cut down this cost with new approaches. To date, the largest battery in the world is in California, with a storage capacity of 1,200 megawatt hours. That's enough energy to power a standard Western home for 330 years straight, or charge a Tesla 16,000 times. But batteries are not the focus of this video. Instead, we'll look at gravity storage, which aims to be much cheaper than batteries. Instead of storing energy in the bonds of chemical compounds, gravity storage uses the potential energy stored in an object or fluid that's raised above the ground. The amount of energy stored is simply the mass times by the height times by the acceleration of gravity. Gravity storage is nothing new. In fact, the first system is believed to be from 1909 in Switzerland. This type of gravity storage is known as pumped hydro, and nowadays it is the largest form of energy storage by quite some margin. The largest system is in Virginia, which holds 24,000 megawatt hours of energy. That's 20 times larger than the world's biggest battery that I mentioned earlier. This may seem like a great solution, however there are many challenges blocking the future of pumped hydro. The largest of which is the fact that these storage facilities require a huge amount of water to be stored at a very high elevation. And we've used the vast majority of potential sites for these storage systems. So what are the solutions to this? Well, the companies Energy Vault and Gravitricity believe the secret is in concrete blocks. These blocks are much more dense than water, meaning it is much heavier for the same volume, about four times heavier in fact, using high density concrete. This means the same volume would only need to be lifted a quarter as high to store the same amount of energy. To put this into context, if a standard 20 foot shipping container was filled with high density concrete, it would have to be winched 250 meters into the air to store the same amount of energy as a Tesla Model 3 battery pack. So what's the point of this new age gravity storage? Will it be of any use? And can it compete or even replace grid scale batteries? Let's have a quick look at the two projects from Energy Vault and Gravitricity. Energy Vault is focusing on a design with lots of small bricks that can be stacked up near the base, while Gravitricity is looking to use old mine shafts to provide locations for raising and lowering a big heavy weight. This means the Energy Vault design is looking to maximize energy storage whilst the gravitricity design is able to put out more power. See, when we store energy, two different things are important, energy and power. Large energy storage is good for taking excess energy that is generated and releasing it later when there isn't enough available, whereas power is useful to meet sharp rises in demand to keep the grid operating at the right frequency. This is known as frequency response. So now we know how and why these systems work, are they any better than batteries? This question obviously depends on what you mean by better. One benefit is that these gravity storage devices don't use as many precious metals as lithium ion batteries, though I can't actually find any life cycle assessments of these systems, so their overall environmental impact is hard to quantify. Also, as we discussed earlier, the size of these systems is much larger than for batteries. While this will likely be a limitation in a considerable number of cases and limit scalability, it may not be such a large issue in some more remote applications. 
This size and location constraint is even more notable for Gravitricity as they are planning on using old and unused mine shafts, which aren't just laying around anywhere. To combat this, they've discussed digging custom shafts, but this comes at quite a large cost, which is the final point I want to discuss. Cost is arguably the most important metric for emerging technologies. If gravity storage can beat grid scale batteries on price, they might just become the new gold standard for large scale energy storage. So let's crunch some numbers. For the cost of a storage system, we use something called the levelized cost of storage, or LCOS. This is different from just upfront costs, as it also takes into account a system's lifetime, ongoing costs, and many more things, enabling us to easily compare different systems. Let's look at the levelized cost of storage for our different systems. First of all, we can look at batteries. Now, as you build bigger battery systems, you benefit from economies of scale, which means it becomes cheaper per megawatt hour of storage. For huge batteries, this can be as low as $200 per megawatt hour, or up to $400 per megawatt hour for smaller systems. In pursuit of simplicity here, we'll just say a battery system will cost around $300 per megawatt hour. Gravitricity has two price predictions for their system, one when using an existing mineshaft and one for when a new one must be constructed. For an existing mineshaft, they've calculated a cost of $171 per megawatt hour, and with a new shaft, a cost of $303 per megawatt hour. However, these figures are likely pretty optimistic and are yet to be proven in the real world. Energy Vault, on the other hand, have stated an estimate of just $50 per megawatt hour for the levelized cost of storage, but I've seen no backing to this claim and I can't say I believe it just yet. In reality, it would make sense for it to be between the cost of Gravitricity's two systems, as they would still have to build a crane, but it is probably cheaper than digging a mine shaft. So let's call it $240 per megawatt hour for now. What does this show us? Well, if you need a relatively small grid storage option, you're not constrained by size or have a convenient mine shaft nearby, gravity storage may be a relatively cost competitive option compared to lithium iron cells when we go off Graphitricity's cost predictions. That's a look at pricing for storage, but what about the all important power we spoke about earlier? Well, a high powered grid scale battery pack, like the Tesla system in Hornsdale, Australia, can output around 0.8 megawatts of power for every megawatt hour of storage, whereas the Gravitricity system can output about 0.4 megawatts of power and Energy Vault just 0.2 megawatts. So, to get the same power output from each system, you would need to have a Gravitricity system twice the storage capacity of a battery or an energy vault with four times the storage capacity. Scaling up these systems so drastically would massively increase the cost, and means they are likely uncompetitive compared to battery systems, when power output is the driving factor. In conclusion, what does this mean for the new age of gravity storage? With the rapidly dropping prices, small footprint and ease of installation for battery storage, I don't think it will be replaced by gravity storage anytime soon. That being said, in some scenarios, gravity storage may in fact be a better option. For example, in areas where space is plentiful or suitable old mine shafts exist. As cost will always be the key factor for many in industry, I'll be exciting to see if companies can meet their ambitious price targets. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and let me know your thoughts in the comments below.